Hi, I'm Kelly Taylor, and welcome to Canada Talks Archery. We're here to talk about anything and everything as it applies to archery, from compound to recurve to target and hunting. Canada Talks Archery is proud to have PSE Archery as its presenting sponsor. For quality bows for every application, when you want precision shooting equipment, trust PSE Archery. Check out PSE's latest bow, the Shoot Down Pro. Contact your local authorized retailer or visit psearchery.com. Shooting for the gold medal, representing Canada, please welcome Dustin Watson. This is our inaugural episode and we're joined today by Sean McKenty, who is uh, an archer and a well-known coach from Southern Ontario, and Dustin Watson, who is the reigning World Field U21 champion and just recently uh, earned a silver medal at the Canada Winter Games. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. So, Sean, uh, let's start with you. Um, you were in Yankton when uh, when Dustin won his uh, World Field Championship. Set the stage for us. Tell us how that shook down. His lead up to it was pretty good. We, he, uh, you know, obviously he made the cut uh, going through shooting the unmarked and marked rounds, uh, and that uh, that linked him up with uh, with who he was going to be shooting off with uh, in the in the pool system that they use. So once he uh, once he's in the pool system, he needs to shoot the better than the guy in front of him, you know, to to move on up, similar to like what Lancaster does. And of course, uh, he got up there and uh, he was faced off uh, against the um, one fellow from uh, Slovenia. We, I was able to go around with him on the field and uh, he managed to, uh, came down to the very last target and uh, you, uh, Dustin had to get all his in uh, to get him by a point. And, uh, and he managed to pull that off. It was like the 20 meter bunny they would finish off on. So that was a pretty rough goal, but that set him up for, um, for the gold medal match, which basically he was going to wind up doing pretty much exactly the same thing. You know, we knew about the the range and how the, the finals feel that how it was going to be, uh, you know, uh, manufactured. They were going to, they're going to, because Yankton's pretty flat, you know, they don't, uh, they don't have anything, you know, ups and downs that's a, you know, but for the, you know, the top end archers, you know, those ups, that those ups and downs, they really don't, they don't really come into the picture as far as, uh, you know, the shooter's ability does. Right. So, um, so they manufactured some uh, some steep some steep downhills and some 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 steep uphills and uh, the final shot was uh, uh, they had a high lift that they brought up it was about a about a 30 35 meter shot and they brought it up on probably around a 35 40 degree angle uh, so that was pretty neat watching that um, and uh, so he's uh, Dustin starts off uh, one up on the first after the first target then they kind of come even. On the second target, you know, they're really tight back and forth. And uh, we come up to the final target. He was shooting up. And, you know, I just said, you know, you, we kind of, we practiced this beforehand about how much he's would need to maybe kind of cut on it. Um, it is pretty close. So you wouldn't need to cut as much as you would think you would. But, um, you know, so we kind of, you know, got that game plan in our head about where, what he was going to do. And I uh, managed to, uh, he needed to shoot a six on his last arrow to force a shoot off. Um, and then he made the, he pulled that off again and then they brought us back over and they shoot the in the shoot off target there and um you know it was just a little kind of out and away and we kind of discussed a game plan on that it was just gonna if you're gonna do anything just kind of hang in that uh, hang at the bottom end of the six target six ring and you know, let it float right in and uh the uh the guy from slovenia his other partner he winds up shooting just a kind of a low five and the Dustin sailed his just, uh, just I think it was just underneath the underneath, right underneath the six ring, but closer to the center, and uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. So that was the that was the first uh, World Archery Field Medal and since like '86. So that yeah, was that's good. awesome. Yeah. Well, in a, in a shoot off, you only need to be closest, right? Yep, that was good. Yeah, yeah. So Dustin, um, did you go to Yankton thinking you'd uh, come away uh, a with a medal and b that it would be the gold one? Uh, no, not. Not at all, to be honest. I don't think anyone goes to a world championship expecting to win it. Um, but it was it was cool to do it anyways. So how did it feel when you were uh, in the in the gold medal match and it ends all tied and and you're there and you've got one arrow and it's the difference between gold and silver? Um, pretty nerve wracking, to be honest. Um, it was it was really surreal. I really didn't. I don't think I quite understood what was really happening at the time. Like 
your your body just kind of takes over and and the muscle memory kicks in and you just know what to do and, and you get it done well sometimes not knowing is the best right <laughs> that's right stay out of your head as much as you can yeah that's right that's right what was your reaction at home when uh everyone heard that uh that you were coming home with a gold medal uh pretty good i, I remember pretty excited um yeah it was it was i had a lot of support back here so that was super nice yeah yeah how was the week overall awesome it was so much fun uh we started day one qualifications it was a little wet and rainy and there's some pretty pretty steep inclines super rough terrain that i wasn't i didn't think i was quite prepared for i i try trained as hard as i could to for the walking and stuff but that that really kicked me and then um i finished qualification day two rank six and then we went into the eliminations and i was pretty confident going to the eliminations i know how i trusted my setup and i know how i do and under those higher tent situations so i believed in I believed in myself and just try to try to do the best i could yeah awesome so you know that we're sponsored by psc so uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about your citation 40. So I'm shooting a, uh, a yeah a red Citation 40. My my main so I got two of them. My main one's a red one with white limbs, uh, 60 pounds. Um, it shoots fantastic. I absolutely love it. Um, it does exactly what it needs to do every single time. Um, I'm running Doinker Estremos on it right now. Uh, I'm actually I just switched to a V bar setup, and then I'm running a Sherlock sight. Uh, shrewd mini mag, uh, podium, uh, especially the archery podium peep. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, piece of equipment do you think makes the most difference for you? Is it, uh, is, is it just the whole package or is there one? I, I think the, the bow definitely makes the difference. Um, just, just your different setups, your let offs, your poundage, how the bowl rolls over into your, into your valley, what your back wall feels like, how the bowl holds. Is definitely definitely the biggest factor. Everything else you can you can change enough to make it feel comfortable to shoot, but your your base is definitely your bow. Well, you know, I I shoot a PSC as well. I've got the Dominator Duo. Oh and, yeah. And the one thing that I've noticed is that despite that not having a lot of the rubber toys that a lot of other bow manufacturers put on their bows, um, it feels like the most well damped, quiet bow I've ever shot. For sure. I don't, I don't get any feedback through hardly any feedback anyways, back through my hands. That bow that, uh, yeah, they, they are very, very well dampened bowls. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, when you're out shooting field and you've got to contend with, uh, elevation changes, what's, what's your strategy for getting your body in the right position? Um, honestly, I just, I, I point the bow at the target and I draw it back. You know, it's it try to try to keep it in my mind that it's the same thing as shooting on a flat target. Like there's you you make your cut beforehand, you adjust your sight for your cut, and and you just shoot it like any other target. Yeah. Okay. So if we had archers, um, you know, below you in age coming up, and you know they're they're looking at uh, Dustin Watson, gold medalist, uh, world champion. Uh, what kind of tips would you give them for uh, progressing in their archery career? um stay out of your head stay out of your head and i know probably every coach out there is going to tell you the same thing but you got to play around and find find what helps to make you stay out of your head um me personally when i started shooting especially when i started shooting the elimination matches and stuff like that i always wanted i always had it in my mind that you you needed to beat the guy beside you but I, I've kind of evolved from that. And now going into every elimination match, I, I have a goal for myself going into that match. And if I achieve that goal and I lose, then I'm still happy. Now, and if I, and if I achieve that goal and I win, then even better and I get to move on. I'm um, right. in Yankton for my, from just before my, uh, what was that? I think that was my one eighth round. Yeah, or no, maybe my quarterfinal, I think it was. Quarters, yeah. My quarterfinal match was my last round of six targets, and I wanted to shoot the 100. I wanted to shoot 100 points. That's what I wanted. 
um because that kind of has you at that 400 average and i shot a 99 and i came out i came out with the wind so i was pretty happy with that that one extra point would have been nice but it got the job done either way yeah yeah awesome so do you find then that um setting a goal that isn't winning helps keep that pressure out of your head 100 percent. that that is the only strategy that i found that actually keeps yeah keeps me focused instead of instead of worrying about the guy what the guy's shooting beside you it just allows you just to worry about how your shots are feeling how they're breaking and and what they're doing for you in a sense you're competing against yourself right 100 percent. yeah because even though you're competing against someone else really um uh, your your biggest demon is is your own nerves and your own uh, um, you know that's right. It's, right? It, it's all in your head. No matter no matter what anyone wants to tell you, ninety percent of the archers out there have the possibility of shooting a perfect round. It's all in their head. Right. So do you? Um, uh, some people they uh, hum a little tune to try and take their mind off the the process. Do you do any of that? I, I don't typically know. I just, uh, I, I'm kind of a bit of a quiet guy on the line for the most part. I try to try to stay focused on what I want to get done. I don't, I don't try to distract myself from my shooting. Um, I prefer not to come back off the line and have a conversation about something else or anything like that. I, if I'm in a match, I prefer to like mentally stay in that match. If, you, if that makes sense. George Riles um, calls it must be present to win. That's right. Right. <laughs> and, and that's, that's what I found helps me the most is just is stay focused on what you want to get done. Don't, I, I don't like being distracted from what's going on. I want to sit there and I want to, and at the end of the, at the end of one of the rounds, like at, at the end of a set, I want to be able to kind of reflect very briefly on how those three shots felt and and how i can improve them for the next round okay let's bring sean back in and uh sean talk a little bit about uh, what you see uh it's going right for dustin right now um to be perfectly honest is support group right you you got to if if uh i you know I, i've coached uh i've dealt with a lot of kids over the years uh decades and and those that have a good home support group um, they've got that base, they've got that, you know, they, they've got that, that support that, that keeps them going. Um, you know, some of the kids they're you know, they don't have that. And it's a, it's a much, much tougher road, uh, for them, right. Because there's, you know, there's always something outside that's outside life that's kind of kicking them. Um, you know, and so it, having that, having that, uh, that support structure behind you, uh, and that can be, that can be family, right. That can be, um, members in your club you know there's there's always that uh you know in some clubs there's always that one guy that's willing to take the shirt off his back and help out any kid he possibly can right um and that's all part of it right and you and dustin has that he's got that support structure right from right from family right to the club right to you know uh, i've been working with dustin for just over a year now and just a matter of just uh you know like from from a coach standpoint you know it's kind of my job to make sure that he knows what's available to him and where he wants to go. Uh, if he wants to go, like when he said he wanted to try out for world fields, I said, well, okay, well, we got to figure out, you got to have to figure out how to shoot unmarked. Right. And so, and that's a whole new training sector that's, that shooting say an, an IFAA field round doesn't have. Right. So you have to get that in place and, and get that, and get that explained to him, get him working on that. So he understands how that, how all that plays out. Right. So it's just a matter of making sure that that from my standpoint, that he, everything that he that he needs, I get in place well ahead of schedule. So the farther ahead of schedule from the event that I can get everything, like, okay, we need to get to the club, go over all the targets, go over all the distances, explain all the math that, that can be involved, you know, what's in the rules, right? You've got to know that, like, you, you know, I, I, I think that's one of the things that a lot of the especially the kids, the, the, the younger, younger adults that they kind of gloss over is that they, they get to a tournament and, and they don't know the rules and they need to know how to play the game 
And there's always something in there. Like when I started explaining everything to Dustin, I could see the eyes kind of like, oh my God, I didn't know there was all this involved. And then, yeah, there is, there's a lot involved. It's not all generally applies, but you still got to know it or understand it, right? And so I'm, I'm kind of like that buffer to make sure that, okay, yeah, we need this, 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 and this, and this is why, you know? And I, again, when you go back to his, his family support structure that he has, you know, it all, he can bounce all that stuff off because he's, you know, he's seven hours away from me, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's not like I can just do a weekend trip and, hey, we can cover this again, right? So he's got that family support and the club structure that he can try all this stuff out and, and, and reflect on everything and, you know, get his game plan because every person's game plan is somewhat different, right? So uh, once he gets his game plan in place and he can uh, adjust his mindset to what uh, to whatever game he's going to be playing, right? So he's, you know, he's going to be trying out for, um, for the uh, Junior Worlds, that's Target and Limerick. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's some other events coming up that's, uh, you know, maybe he wants to sh do some 3D or do some, tr do some more field, then even more, you know, once he knows how to, once he gets that base in the place, then he can go any place and just take that same mindset with him. Between you and, uh, and your wife, Fiona McLean, uh, you've been at some pretty uh, high level tournaments. What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> We've been uh, what, what what do you say is key to being able to keep a level head uh, while all about you are losing theirs? So much depends on the individual person, right? And uh, and that's something that I kind of discovered. Um, I went down to um, I shot in the world championships in 1990, so we're going back a few decades now. And uh, and 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 I was there with some other people, and they were all bent on the you know they're going to be the top guys, right? And after the first day, there was there was like three or four of us. We're all within the same, well, within a few points of each other, right? So it's kind of anybody's game. And and when I kind of stepped back and saw how each person handled that pressure, nobody handled it the same way. So you really couldn't say how he handles it was right or wrong. It how he handled it was best for him, right? So you get the person that you know they can't know the score, you know. And that's how they have to try to mitigate that kind of pressure or the guys at home and do other things like this or me. I was just the opposite. I, I knew what my score was. I knew what the other person's score was. I knew how many, if you do that enough times, then it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, and so, and then the other person, you know, he, he deals with his pressure in a different way. So there's, there's multiple, there's multiple ways of handling it. It's just a matter of finding out what best works for you. Right. And that's kind of where they kind of, you kind of bounce that off the coach and, you know, your, your, your support structure to find out what's going to, what's best for you. Cause what's, you know, what somebody teaches in a seminar is fantastic, but then you can go to another seminar from somebody else and he'll say something different. It's not right or wrong. It's just different. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bounce that off. Like, because like when I, you know, I have some other people like coach who handle, who handle pressure very, very differently than what Dustin does, but that's what works out for them. Cause you kind of have to kind of help them through that. Right. Right. You know, what do you think um, of Dustin's strategy of, of setting a goal that doesn't necessarily center around winning, setting a goal of setting a certain score and hitting that? And then, however, yeah, it it's all. Out. Yeah, it's it's a, it's 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 a it's a very it's a very legitimate strategy. Um, it, de it depends on it a lot depends on the mindset of the person. Right. So the idea is that if you if you concentrate on yourself and you get one sh like every arrow is one one arrow at a time, no matter how you work at it. So yeah, I'm going to shoot this arrow best I can. And you're going to load the next arrow and shoot that arrow the best I can. And you shoot that arrow the next the best I can. If you keep your mindset on that, then it really, it kind of, you kind of nullify what the other guy's doing because you're totally concentrated on what you're doing. Um, you know, if you keep that mindset, then that's going to work for you. You know, um, if you're more concerned about what the other guy's doing, then it means that you're not concerned about what you're doing. Right. So you've got to, you know, you've got to have that, that kind of like step back. I need to do this, 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 and this. And you, it kind of separates himself from, you know, from, you know, wondering like, you know, he, you hear the guy, he cuts loose a shot and then you hear the crowd cheering, you know, well, you know, he shot a good arrow, right? Well, all you got to do is do your thing where you're shooting my, I'm going to shoot this arrow the best I possibly can, right? And so that keeps him in your head. And, you know, I, I can say, you've got to be there to play. You got to play, you're here to play the game. And the game is not really, I don't got to beat that guy. I got to put my arrow in the highest scoring rank every time, you know? And right. depending on what you're at, if you're indoors, you, you can't miss. If you're outdoors, now even now you can't miss, right? So yeah. you got to shoot the best you can. 
So when, when someone is working on their archery career and they're looking at going to this seminar, or going to that seminar, um, cause you mentioned one guy says this, one guy says that, you know, mm. neither of them are wrong. Neither of them are necessarily right. How important is it to have different voices, um, helping give you, uh, information that you can then distill down into something that works for yourself? Um, it's, uh, I think it's very, very important because, even though, um, because I, I've been through this, you know, I, I coached this one fellow years ago and he spent probably around $12,000 going to, you know, I'm going to go to a George Wells seminar. I'm going to go to a Larry Wise seminar. I'm going to go to a, spend a weekend with Dave Cousins. I'm going to go here, here, and here. Right. And so after he finished doing this whole circuit, he come back and he said, so I asked him, I said, well, you know, how things going? And he said, well, they didn't say anything different than what you did. I said, well, yeah, but did, did they say it in a way that you understood it better? They said, well, yeah, yeah, he explained this a little bit better. And I said, well, then that's the benefit to you, right? I said, you know, like two plus two equals four, but so does three plus one. So you have to, you know, you, you, you got to, you know, make sure that, you know, that's, you know, how I explain something, you may not get it, but another person may explain the same thing, but in a different way. And then then the lights go off. Right. And that's something that, uh, you know, that's, you know, the, the more voices, the better, as long as you don't at the very beginning, you, you kind of don't want to have too many voices in, in the beginning, but once they kind of get their pattern going, then, then you, then you just, you start inviting everything else to come in there and it's either gonna, it's going to verify what they already know, which is 99% of the problem. And then the issues when these guys go to these other seminars is that they already know the answer. They're just looking for validation of it. And if they get validation from these five pros that are running the circuit, they're running these information circuits, then they feel much better about what they're doing, that they're not doing something, you know, off in left field someplace. Right. And, and that's kind of the most, but you know, the, the more voices the better for sure. You know, because uh, you're going to know right away whether, okay, this guy is, you know, he's not, that doesn't make sense. But you know, when you get, these guys are all kind of the, they're saying exactly the same thing, but in different ways. And, you know, one, you may understand it better and another one it's may not. So you got to pick that out. Right. Right. Okay. Let's go back to Dustin now. Um, so Dustin, the big news uh, in the last 12 months for you was the uh, world field championship, but the most recent news was uh, the Canada winter games. Tell us how that went. Yeah, that went really well. Um, I came out with an individual silver medal as well as a mixed team silver medal. Um, we started uh, started on Monday with unofficial practice into Tuesday with official, and then Wednesday and Thursday were our qualifications. Uh, qualifications went okay. Uh, day one of qualifications was also our, uh, our regional score. So that was kind of, you're kind of shooting a two and one there. So you're a little more worried about your score for that one. Um, I got there and I was playing around with some things and the, the lighting was quite poor. Um, it was kind of like shooting into a black hole, to be honest. And the setup that I was running at that time was not, was not cutting it. I wasn't, I wasn't confident in any one of my shots. So I kind of did a bit of, bit of adjustment and I, I switched to lenses and played with my peep sight and, and got it, got through day one, just kind of skimmed by it. And I shot my best shots and shot what I could. And then end of day two, where qualifications in my mind qual that round of qualifications didn't mean so much it it wasn't a score to to count for regionals and and I was pretty confident in my ranking coming out of day one so I was a little more confident and like I, I had the ability to play with my setup a little bit and, and get a better setup going into eliminations so I played with yeah my my scope and and my peep sight and stuff and and got a better setup for eliminations um individuals went extremely well i i was pretty happy with how i shot into the gold medal match i it was it was a nail biter like it came down to the last shot we were one point apart so i couldn't i couldn't have asked for anything better than that it was great shooting um we went into mixed teams me and a girl uh abby bunn here from southern ontario as well we went in uh actually me and her i'd both shot in uh, 2019 at Red, in Red Deer for the Winter Games as well. We were, we were a team there as well. So we knew how each other shot. We knew, we knew how, we knew what to do. We'd shot, we'd shot together before. We trained all this year. 
for a mixed team event. We knew what to do and we knew we knew how to feed off each other and that worked out well and we came out with the silver and that as well, also by one point. <laughs> so right, it only takes one point, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can't miss well, an indoors anymore. So yeah. So um related to your story about the lighting, I uh I had an interview with uh, Kyle Douglas. Okay. Uh, he's now uh, now shooting Bowtech, but um, when he was shooting PSC, he um, he had just won Vegas a, a couple of times. And of course, he's a command style shooter, right? Um, and so we were talking a little bit about that. And then I asked him, so when you're getting ready for a 3D shoot, what is your what is your preparation? And he says, primarily, it's learning how to aim at something I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, so that, I thought that was funny, and I, I thought that was uh, applicable to your situation on day one at uh, in, in PEI. Yeah, for sure it is. So uh, what's next on your agenda then? You're getting ready to qualify for Worlds in Ireland, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Youth Worlds is coming up in Limerick, Ireland. Uh, I think that's going to be my next venture. We're kind of just working through the best we can. We don't have a whole lot of information on anything, what's going on right now, but as information comes in, we're... Kind of trying to come up with a plan for this summer and and what what I want to do and where I want to go for this summer but Limerick's definitely on the agenda well one of the challenges is that it's in early July which in Canada doesn't give us a whole lot of an outdoor season to uh to to to, to qualify right yeah yeah so I mean we're we actually I was hoping to before that for PEI the weather was pretty nice here for a little bit so I was uh, I was really hoping that as soon as I came back that this week maybe I could sh- start trying to shoot outside a little bit. But I came home to about a foot and a half of snow more than what was here a week ago. So <laughs> that that didn't work out in my favor very well. So we're I'm gonna have to play around with some things and hopefully hopefully be able to figure something out to get some good training in before Limerick. Well, it doesn't necessarily help that uh, you have to start your outdoor season by snow blowing the shooting lane, right? That's right. Yeah. So, are you a, a command shooter? Do you shoot a hinge or a button, or what do you do? I shoot a button. Yeah, fairly command. I've been trying to work on on not shooting so command style, but it seems to be working for me quite well right now. So, I think I'm I think I'm just gonna execute that as the best I can. Well, I think uh, if you um... If you're able to control the process, that's right. It's okay to shoot command style. That's right. Yeah, it's it's the people that that get a little twitchy and you know they're just pounding. As long it. as you can keep away from that target panic, you're doing okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Sean, what do you uh, what advice do you have for people that are uh, you know looking at uh, should I be a command shooter? Should I be a surprise shot shooter? Um, me personally. I think you should have the ability to alter your shot at will. A lot of people that uh, basically run a back tension and they have a long motion, they come through the shot, they're a, um, they should have the ability to speed that up, right? Go come through that shot quicker if they need to, right? Because, you know, it's, you know, you can have a great shot, but if it's in the six ring, it doesn't really matter too much, right? So you, you know, you need to be able to get that shot and play with the wind and stuff like that. The, uh, um, the, the command shooting, um, a lot of people confuse that with punching, right? So uh, the command shooting is there, like, they don't have the, like, you know, the finger or the thumb. It's not just sitting there winding up and they're jumping off a 10 foot ladder and hitting that trigger, <laughs> right? It, it's there, right? And they're gonna, the idea is that generally they have, they shoot like kind of a stiffer system where they're shooting the arrows a little bit stiffer, the um, weights are heavier, um, you know, more more mass weight to the to the bow, so it's kind of dropping. You know, you, you're coming over top of the target, letting gravity take its effect and dropping into the target, and you're on that target for about a you know half a second or whatever, just to get that comfort zone in your head going. And it's just a matter of having in your head that okay, I'm going to shoot it now, right? So generally, your thumb is on the trigger or very very close to it, but it's just a matter of like okay, there it is now. It's really no different. Uh, I remember, God, this is going back when I was like 15. Um, I was, uh, this is like uh, very early 80s, late 70s. And the, the, uh, I went for an eye doctor's appointment. And the doctor that I had, the optometrist, he was actually 
the one of the trainers for these for the um, sniper teams here in Canada for the U.S. military or for the Canadian military, and and they were teaching both styles. Where you, and that was back then, so I knew what it was, right? But we always kind of confuse it with somebody sitting there and just kind of, you, you have that, you know, the hunting release aid and that finger is like, you know, pointed right in the air and then it slams down on the trigger. That's that's punching. That's going to get you, that'll get you a target panic real fast. But getting your finger on the trigger and I'm going to shoot it now, um, that's certainly a very, very effective way. And, and it's always been that way for a long time. You know, it's just that, uh, you know, some people, there's some people that can't do, they can do either. Um, I think a person should have the ability to, to uh, they'll, they'll kind of lean towards one, but they should have the ability, I teach anyway, to have the ability to do both, right? So if, if you get into a system, you know, because everything depends on what you're doing. Everybody, we're not always indoors at 18 meters, right? We're outdoors, we're on a field course. If you're on a field course and, you know, you're, it's a heavy, steep down angle, you know, trying to come through that shot may not work for you. So it's the idea of being able to, okay, I can get on there for like a half a second before the, before the, the your angles and everything kind of put you, put you out of sight to, uh, to get on that target and, and get that shot gone as fast as you can, you know, so you're not bobbling around too much. Right. And it's just a matter of knowing, you know, you got to know your bow. You have to know you, your bow, your system, how you do it. Right. And uh, like I, said, I, I teach, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't teach command to a new person. Um, but I would let them evolve into it if that's the route they want to go, right? There's no, there's no right or wrong to either one. Right. It's all, it's all comes down to control. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and you know, like, uh, you'll generally see that, a, that a, a person that has a, you know, like a, a follow through, like kind of a Jesse Broadwater type thing they're um, you know, they'll have a system that kind of is more to that. And you, you'll see, uh, generally, you'll see, uh, um, you know, it's kind of a broad, broad brush on a lot of things, but a person that generally shoots command style is more holding weight, more mass weight. You know, they're usually shooting stiffer arrows. They're usually, you know, the whole system is definitely on a stiffer plane, um, you know, uh, and that's, they kind of, that's what it kind of evolves to, right? So you uh, and probably your system to it. And they're probably as close to that 60 pound limit as they can get. Oh yeah, and it's it's for them. It's probably more the holding weight, like you know, like like you know, back in the day when we shot 40, 50 percent let off. You know, we're hanging on to 25, 30 pounds back then. And of course, when you're hanging on to, it was nothing for us to have bows that were 10, 12 pounds. And now we're seeing that again. You know, the yeah. guys holding holding weight, and they've got a ton of weight on their bows. You know, uh, you know, yeah, you know, Slosser's got like you know, 30 ounces out the front and 32 out the back, and you know, and. You know, he, you can't see, you can't deny he's putting them down there. So, but it's all about getting it in place for just that microsecond to get that shot gone. The one thing I found uh, really helpful sometimes is to uh, warm up with a bare bow. Mm -hmm. so I've got a 40 pound PSE bare bow. And uh, yeah. when you, when you've shot like seven ends at 40 pounds holding weight, uh, going back to the dominator and it's, uh, you know, 16 pounds holding weight, it's like nothing anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Sean, anything you want to add? Um, no, it's we're just uh, we're just getting uh, you know I've got a, a few students in the in the mix here, and we're Dustin's uh, we're going to get Dustin ready for uh, for Junior Worlds, and um, you know when the when the information comes out about Senior Worlds, if he wants to take a crack at that too, we'll we'll see how that plays in, but you know we'll get get some seven twenties down range and get them in place and. You know, see about uh, you know running some mock eliminations, and you know, all I can do is I can only point him in the direction. He's still he's still got to get those arrows down range. So you can open the door. He's got to walk through it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. sometimes we got to drag him a bit, but you know. <laughs> so Dustin, congratulations once again on uh, on a great few months of archery. Uh, hope Thank you me. keep it up, and um, I will. Uh, I, I'm predicting that I'm going to see you in Ireland because I'm going to be there myself. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hopefully we'll see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dustin Watson, Archer from Ontario and Sean McKenty, a longtime archery coach. Thank you guys for being on Canada Talks Archery. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap for Canada Talks Archery this month. Check us out on the third Tuesday of every month. Thanks for listening. And thanks again to presenting sponsor PSE Archery. I'm Kelly Taylor, and I shoot the PSE Dominator Duo. See you all in a month.